It took Ruben Amrim just 1 minute 17 seconds to announce himself to the Manchester United faithful. Diallo trailblazing down the right hand side to find Marcus Rashford, the man who is trying to redeem himself. Sent from the heavens for the Red Devils. He was him. Well, until Amari Hutchinson scored a screamer from distance, but we'll get into that. We're here for an unbiased breakdown to really dissect what happened. Three key takeaways from Almrim's first game. We're gonna go through it one by one. It's not just about the result, it's the friends you make along the way. There will be a few of those guys in this video to help me break it down. Let's get into it. The talk of the town was all about Ruben Almrim flying in from Portugal with this fresh new formation, a 3-4-3, and how would that look? Because I agree with McKenna, Ipswich man, Manager. He said, listen, we've seen this formation played out in the Premier League many a time already. You know, we've had Pep, we've had inverting fullbacks, 3-2 build-ups. It was just how he was going to demonstrate his version of events and make it be known to the Premier League that he has something different to spice up the place. So let's get to the Tactico board. I've got something to show you. So quickly, just to take a little look at the Manchester United team that Ruben Amram sent out to see Ipswich. It was... You know, a pretty bog standard 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, I found it a little bit interesting, very interesting to see Diallo at wing back, Dallo at left wing back because you've obviously got opposing um, players on on those sides. You've got a right foot on the left, you've got a left foot on the right. It's not usually how I'm used to seeing a wing back formation. Chelsea, we had Alonso, Victor Moses. Um, I've seen this. Uh, before where you get your wing backs up the pitch attack with five defend with five cross from those wide positions crash the box back post from those wide positions but having those guys there to cut in was interesting Ganacho in one of the 10 positions as well behind Rashford who some may say is not really a striker he's more of a winger but he is still trying to find his best form so this was something new for him and of course no Martinez uh, no uh Lindelof if he counts at this point but he wasn't involved from the beginning so a couple of injuries for Man United so Evans is out there but I'm not expecting to see him for the long term of course and Noah Garte who was previously managed um, at Sport in Lisbon by Ruben Almarin but he was not in the team with Ericsson playing in that pivot so a little bit surprising but it is the first team um, that he's put out there so it was always going to be. Ahmad Diallo could be Manchester United's new spark in this Ruben Almarin system but he has to do this. I can't be seeing him at right wing back. I'll be honest, I'm already off the boat. Now, it sounds drastic, it sounds extremist, but I just believe that he needs as many touches up the pitch as possible. Now, can Almerim make Manchester United a very ball dominant team in a couple of months with the profile of players that he has at his disposal? I mean, he can try. <laughs> you know, it's Mason Mounts, it's Agates, uh, Casemiro's, it's not going to be easy because I think he will need a window to rejig and juggle that midfield and make those profiles make sense because the recruitment has been a bit shabby. But more on Diallo, I just want to see him in the final third. We all saw that goal. We all saw that assist. He was, you know, fantastic. And in those half spaces, that is where I think he'll do the most damage, regardless of how the long term looks. You're going to have to do a lot of defending at wing back. It's going to cost you a lot physically. And he's had a lot of those touches today in his own half. Not something you really want to see. So I just believe that there are other profiles, other players that could do that job. Um, it's a physical, you know, less glamorous job. And leave the technical, teched out players to have fun almost. And there is Diallo's, there's Maserari's, there's Ganacho's, Anthony's. There's players that can play on the wing back position that aren't as gifted, that can do the hard yards. But let's keep Diallo safe. He's one of few Man United players we enjoy watching. So that's my thoughts on it. Ahmad's wasted as a wing back. Ahmad needed to be in one of the 10 positions, but the manager did it today because maybe he didn't think Anthony was ready to start there in the wing back position. I would have started Anthony in, the, in right wing back and I would have started Ahmad right attacking midfield. If I'm being totally honest with you, and I have to be super critical, I think it's a wasted position. I was a bit surprised to see Diallo in the wing back role. I would expected, I would have expected, sorry, to see him in, in a more advanced role. But then it took me back to what Amarim said in one of his first interviews, actually the first interview with the club. He mentioned that he played in every position, centre-back, full-back, every position in midfield. The only two positions he had never played in were striker and goalkeeper. So he was indirectly telling the players, listen, I'm going to ask you guys to play in positions you probably never played before, but 
you're just going to have to adapt. For me, that just shows how talented the kid is. I look at that left 10 role, it's begging for Ahmad Diallo. Like, we created two big opportunities today. One came when we scored the goal, and the second one was when he isolated the defender on that right-hand side. He tried to cut in, and it was a block here that stopped it from going in, really, let's be honest. He just has that something special that I don't think the others have. Bro, let's save the energy. Let's save it for that left 10 roll because the wing back option, it just takes away a lot from his game. That mm. For me, it's just, it, it, it's, it's a lost cause in that regards. Marcus Rashford, we must talk because your role today up front, quite interesting on many levels and layers because we're talking about you being in a new role where can you resurrect, revive your career? Do you need to move on? In my opinion, you do in regards to a, new environment, a new league, a new, you know, motivation to make memories again. But also, Hoyland and Xerxes coming off that bench and being pretty ineffective, being pretty bland. That can't continue. You know, Manchester United, they need someone in that striker position to strike fear into the lives of the opposition. And Rash Rashford got his goal today. But his all-round play will be questioned going forward whether he can do that role consistently. There are no natural maybe wingers in this team with those two tucked in tens. So he's going to have to find a position somehow. And then Xerxes and Hoyland just need to be better because a lot of money was spent and there's a real rawness to their game. Whether it be Xerxes not having the finishing, the clinical nature, not really imposing himself on the pitch the way he needs to. And Hoyland actually having some box instincts and he's getting into areas where he should score but he ain't scoring. Um, and those that finishing on that right foot today was very, very off. So that striker position for Ruben Amrim is going to be very interesting. And that's what I'm going to be targeting because we all know Jokerez at the end of the season is everybody's cup of tea. So that striker position in this formation in particular, an outlet, someone that holds the ball up, gets goals, brings others into play. It's a big position for Amrim and he's got to get it right. Whether he has those people in the place to do so in the building already currently i don't think so so the transfer market for you resurrection redemption of rashford he, you know he scored it within 90 90 seconds yeah but he was rubbish though the beauty of this system yeah it's going to expose all the deficiencies of all the players that i've been calling out for years the likes of the rashfords the likes of the garnachos even bruno bruno looked better when he dropped into the eight in the midfield in the 10 in between the lines receiving the ball driving the ball he can't do that man the manager was getting onto him because he kept kicking the ball long and the manager said as well bruno likes to go for the long pass and the manager doesn't want that bro listen to me yeah i think this is probably the biggest time in Rashford's career now mm. I almost look at it in a point of now or never like if you don't produce now you ain't getting it you ain't going into no left 10 role or right 10 role whatever you want to call it yeah you ain't definitely going into left wing back role it's the striking option like he showed glimpses today of it but then faded away simple ball to him he lost the ball Ipswich went on the counter I think it's time for a new environment for Rashford I'm, and I'm not saying get him out but I think remember that spark that he had when he first burst onto the scene the, the brace against Arsenal, the, the debut goal against, uh, North, um, was it Michelin, the debut goal for England, that spark has disappeared. And I think he can rediscover that spark somewhere else, unfortunately. It's all been luxury for you in your career. You've had the best of the best. You've had being touchline winger. Then you've had left inside. You've had this, you've had that. Mm. You now have to now suffer now. You have to be almost like, you know what? I've done my time now. Now it's for the team. Now yeah. what can I do for you as a coach? And if you can't, you're out of the team, bro. And mm. you are you are literally collecting wages on the bench, bro. Because I'm going to not care, mate. He won't be like, well, that's, that's your problem, the, 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 you know, Ineos. That's not my problem. Now, to bring a positive point to proceedings here, I've got Martinez at left side centre-back as an instant upgrade to Almerim's system. We all know that Evans was there in this game. And let's be honest, he's, he's getting on a bit, you know. He's... Meant to be in the old folks' home. You take him for long walks, you check his blood pressure, you look after him, you feed him, you clothe him, and, you know, you let him rest to the sidelines on the bench. Maybe last 10 minutes, little impact. But in this system, back three, the build-up should be safer, should be more secure, but you're going to need a left footer over there. We've seen how important they can be, whether it's your Gabriels at Arsenal, your, your Colwells at Chelsea. If you've got some balance, it opens up far more passing lanes. And to be honest, Martinez needs this because he's been struggling in a two. Some people will say he's five foot four of an attitude. So we now need to see you as a back three merchant. And we have some evidence to bring to the table. Cesar Spelaqueta for us in a back three was superb. And obviously he's a far better player.
player, but my point is he wasn't the tallest. Um, he could be targeted in a two. He would never played on a back four in a two, centre back, and rightly so. So Martinez could be feeling that he could revive his career at Manchester United in this position as long as he stays fit. And I think on the ball, he is certainly good enough to progress and to improve build-up play being from Ajax. So this is an immediate upgrade for Manchester United, no doubts about it. Martinez, in terms of playing the back three, I think that's going to be key because I feel like sometimes he does get dragged out wide and then there's no cover. That's where, hence why you've got left wing back role there. You've got extra defenders to cover as well. Martinez is key in terms of playing that ball into midfield, zipping it forward, right? I'm looking at Kobe Mainu as another one to evolve his game and to understand where, is he a six? Is he an eight? Is he a 10? Is he someone that is combative? Is he someone that can stretch a defense? Is he a ball carrier? What is he? The thing is with United fans, what they don't, they're not seeming to realize is that we've seen these players for years. We know their weaknesses. We know their strengths. This manager's, bruv, he's had two sessions with most of these guys. You don't know them from nowhere. You weren't a Man United fan, yeah. He couldn't have had that much time to be sitting and watching tape of these guys. He doesn't know them. So he's kind of getting to know them while games are being played, isn't it? And I think once he gets his strongest team together and he realises the players that he can trust, I think we'll be all right, innit? But in the meantime, it's just going to be up and down. I think if Ahmad starts playing in one of those advanced 10 positions where Bruno and Garnacho played... I think teams should be very, very scary because what he can do in those positions could be 10 times worse. He can do 10 times more damage than he did today on as a as a left wing, as a right wing back, sorry. If he plays in one of those 10 positions, oh my Lord, like that's going to be scary. Dare I say your boy, Mason Mount, bro? Mm. Uh, listen, that's a hot take. Mason Mount could maybe possibly thrive in this system. A system that he thrived on the two show in that 3-4-3. Three, three. Yeah. He's played it before, but has there been too much damage done with his injuries? If he can get the best physio, get the best yoga, whatever you want to do here in your spare time, <laughs> do what you need to do, but please just stay fit. It's got to the point now where I'm like, just, just show the world what you're capable of. Give me five games in a row in the Premier League and just give me something. And mm. if he can get him playing them left hand channel or the 10 roles, and he can actually be someone that can run behind the, 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 the nine and create opportunities, bro. We've got player in our hands because bro, if he we... doesn't, I know you're window shopping. I know you got your eyes on Jokerez. I heard about Nkuku, Al Nori. I'd like to throw into the into yeah, the you know Konya, left left side wing back. Anyone as a Chelsea fan, would Ruben Abraham's Manchester United scare me based upon that performance? No, but they got a big game round these parts very soon round the corner, and I'm expecting something different. I'm going to need you a lot against Arsenal on the 4th of December. Will yeah. you be ready, Saeed Television, brother? Bro, Please. you know me. You know me. <laughs> I'm going there. I want to win, man. Yeah. I ain't going to you. I want to win. I don't want no draw. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to playing Arsenal. I'm actually. And I, I don't normally look forward to, to playing them um, in recent years. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing them, bro. Because they just, they just don't impress me at mm. all. Yeah, well, listen, I, I would greatly appreciate if you could handle business there because I'm trying to drag them into a top four fight. So that's oh, they're already in one. They're already <laughs> in one, bro. They're already in one. Trust me. You know what? Every time we play Arsenal, we we're ready. We're ready to do to cause havoc. And this time, I don't think there's any better time to play them. There's not a better time to go and play against Arsenal. I know it's gonna be away and it's gonna be tough. But listen, with this new system, I can see us go to the Emirates and cause some damage over there because there are ways you can hurt Arsenal. There are ways. I think many teams have shown it this season. So I'm ready. I'm definitely ready, bro. It's a team that we should respect here, but not a team that we should go out there and be fearful of. They've not been the same Arsenal as last year. There's still, you know, opportunities where we can hurt them. But I believe this United team could go out there and win against Arsenal. Mm. With the right... Is it too soon? Possibly. But that's where we've got a coach now that can possibly get a team ready build a team and say, right, we're ready to tackle you at the Emirates and go there with a plan. You can lose, you can win. But as long as we've got a plan there, yep. I'm confident in my manager, man. And let's see, let's hope. Because for me, Arsenal, boys, <laughs> we, we've, not been, we've not been great over there for the past couple of years, you know. I reckon it's terrible. I need to win a game there, man. With, with, with what happened to City and this league table, just keep condensing it, brother. Keep bringing everybody together. That's what we are. Just one Chelsea big happy Revival. family for this top four. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, people, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed something funky and fresh for the channel. Do let me know in the comments down below what you made of the proceedings. And to be honest, I'm not really feeling this colour anymore. We need to get this out of here. Oh.
There we go. Beautiful. <laughs>